This building weather pattern will only get stronger in the days ahead. Today's video will discuss the unusual jet stream flow across North America, how it will affect the pattern, and what that means for you. Let's start this video with a look at the jet stream setup across North America and how it will impact weather in the United States in the coming days. Starting out as we go through Friday and into the Saturday and Sunday time frame, can you see the main jet stream flow? I certainly do. It's this polar jet stream diving down and then it forming an actual upside down at U shape as it pushes back northward over parts of Canada. That northward push is called a ridge, and this is significant to the surface weather pattern because it is going to result in warmer than average temperatures lifting north. That's not just set to happen over the United States, but also into Canada as this very broad scale pattern sets up. This ridge in the jet stream is set to dominate the pattern as we go out of this weekend and even into next week. That's going to result in continued abnormal temperatures over a lot of North America. There are going to be a couple of cutoff jet stream dips diving down into the United States amidst this pattern though. Those dips are especially set to target parts of the western as well as the central United States in the coming days that will result in an active pattern amidst some of the warmth. East of there we will also see at least some weaker energy trying to dive down over parts of the eastern US and into the western Atlantic that will trigger at least a little bit of a cool down for some folks along the coastline in particular. Speaking of temperatures, let's talk about just how anomalous that warmth is set to be over parts of the U.S. this weekend. While there will be some cooler than average temperatures as we see those jet stream dips in places like the west as well as the immediate east coast, the clear anomaly is going to be warm over a lot of the United States, especially the orange and red shades from Arkansas through other parts of the Mississippi Valley all the way on up to the Canadian border, indicate temperatures of 10, 15, 20 degrees above normal for early to mid-September. What will those anomalies equate to in terms of actual temperatures across the country? For a day like Saturday, September 13th, you can see how the warmth will especially be building up over that zone in the nation's midsection. All the way as far north as the Dakotas, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan, we're going to have highs climbing up to near 80 to 85 degrees. A little bit further south from there, and you get into the 90 to 95 degree range, and that's going to include a lot of the Midwest. Down south into the south central plains and the lower Mississippi Valley, there's going to be plenty more 90 to 96 degree readings floating all around. Into Sunday, it will be a rinse and repeat scenario for a lot of folks, especially as you go up the Mississippi Valley, we'll see plenty of 90s spreading from the South Central Plains all the way on up to the upper Midwest. It's going to be near 88 degrees in Madison on Sunday. It's going to be 88 in the Twin Cities region. Over to Detroit, we're going to have plenty of mid-80s around, so any of the football games going on in these zones will be dealing with some heat for this time of the year. Further west, we're going to have some cooler air as we get those jet stream dips moving in. Lots of 70s in the valleys out west. Milder air will also be near the east coast as we'll see 80s in the mid-Atlantic and some 70s further north. Of course, the same jet stream flows that help to impact temperatures can also impact precipitation. As we see that cutoff jet stream energy moving out of the west and into the central USA this weekend, that is going to result in an active pattern in specifically those zones. States like New Mexico, Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, as well as in the Dakotas will be getting impacts from some heavier rainfall. That could result in some flooding as a main threat out of Friday. Friday night and into Saturday and Sunday. We could see some severe weather as the jet stream troughing will help in pulling up some ingredients. Overall though, again, I think the main threat is going to be these heavy downpours causing some ponding and flooding issues. The threat out of the first wave of some of this cutoff energy is going to move north into Canada by the time we go into Monday but around that time is when we might start to see the next piece of energy diving in it through the west. Other than a very brief backdoor front that could bring some very isolated showers or storms to places like the Ohio Valley or northeast out of Saturday into Sunday, everyone else is expected to remain generally quieter as we go into this weekend. With that and everything else I've said about the next few days in mind, here's a look at my official weekend weather forecast for Saturday and Sunday. While there will be that dip in the jet stream going on out west, and that will create wet and warm conditions in many zones there, there will be an opposite effect going on further east. We will see that ridge. That will result in warm and generally drier conditions ongoing from especially the Mississippi Valley eastbound. By the way, one spot east of the Mississippi that is going to be very active this weekend, that's Florida. I forgot to mention it earlier because it's so typical. 
Before I jump into the overview of the weather across the country for next week, here's a quick reminder. If you do want consistent, accurate, and educational weather forecasts delivered to you with a no-hype approach in the future, consider hitting that subscribe button and adding to the 9,311 subscribers I already have. Also, here's a note that I wouldn't be able to deliver such accurate forecasts if it weren't for the awesome WeatherBell model maps that I use. You can access WeatherBell model maps with the free trial link down in the description. With that being said, let's actually take a look at a WeatherBell visual of the European Ensemble guidance and what it shows for the jet stream into next week. If you think there's going to be changes to the jet stream, you are mistaken because the jet stream is looking like it's going to be flowing right through central and northern Canada pretty much all the way till Friday, Saturday, and beyond. That means that even as we go through the September 19th and 20th time frame, we're going to continue to see this ridging setup prevail. That means warmer than average temperatures as the general flow over a lot of the United States. We will continue to see some energy cut off, and that's indicated by at least this gray zone around the western and central parts of the country. That indicates those zones could be a little bit more active in terms of precipitation amidst this warmth. Let's put what I just said into graphic form. First, with a look at the temperature trends expected from Monday through Wednesday, about 80% of the country is highlighted in at least that yellowish-orange color that I have on this custom graphic. From the west coast to the east coast, many zones will be at least 5 degrees above average in terms of temperatures there. As you go into those deeper orange shades over a lot of the upper Midwest and the north central U.S., expect temperatures of 10 to 15 degrees above normal even into the early to mid part of next week. With the jet stream ridging expected to continue all the way through Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, expect more warmer than average temperatures over a lot of the country during that time frame as well. While it's warm, some of the only zones getting jet stream energy to fuel up showers and storms are going to be the western and central areas. In terms of drought impacts over the next 10 days, that means that there will be improved drought conditions for any dry zones from the high plains stretching out into the north central plains, on the flip side, we've seen an increasing drought already ongoing for zones like the Ohio Valley back into some parts of the Mississippi Valley. That is only expected to get worse as we see that dry spell building over those zones, even as we go as far down the line as September 20th and the 21st. With that being said, that's all I have for today's forecast. If you liked this and you're new to the channel, I'd love it if you'd subscribe and turn on notifications below so you don't miss any of my updates in the future. Also, one update you may have missed from me is my winter 2025 to 2026 preliminary outlook. That is out. I'll put the link to it in the description. So yeah, thanks for tuning into this video. Go check that one out. God bless you. One Nation Web. Web.